What began as a way to honor members of the military and first responders who died in the September 11th attacks has branched out to remember those who serve and have served in Polk County. These men and women put their lives on the line to guarantee our freedom and safety every day. And unfortunately, some of those pay the ultimate price. A service honoring military, law enforcement, firefighters, and EMS heroes, both past and present, is coming up. And it's an event you don't want to miss. The details are coming up on Polk Place. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Brian Lacey, and joining me in studio is Jamie Brown. Jamie's with the Winter Haven Police Department. She's a public information officer and a good friend to the show. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. As we heard in the intro, um, this has been going on for a few years now. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about the event. How did it get its start? The event started seven years ago. Uh, I am a, uh, the mother of a former Marine. And when he was in the Marines, my son was in the Marines, we found as parents in Polk County that there was not a way for parents to get together and honor those of, of those who serve in our county. Let's face it, we don't have a military base here, and so some of our service members were a little bit forgotten, so to speak. You know, all of the care packages, all of the attention was given to those units that were on bases in our area. And our guys were being scattered amongst all various kinds of bases. So that group, the parents, the Marine Parents Group, formed an alliance that built from not only military and Marines, but it started going to the other branches and then it ultimately led to our law enforcement and our, our firefighters and our EMT heroes. With that, most of our kids who had joined the military joined because they had a passion due to the 9-11 events. A lot of our parents in our group were um, knew exactly what happened on 9-11 and the kids were in high school, middle school and high school during that, that that tragic time. And so we decided as, as a group that we needed to honor each one of those who, who have laid their lives down due to those tragic events, not only those who, who died in the horrific 9-11 event, but those who stepped up to go and serve due to the 9-11 events. And it has just blossomed from there. As a public information officer, you kind of see both sides. Number one, as a mother, uh, of a former military member, but you also uh, are, are working in the trenches. You're working with law enforcement. Talk to me a little bit about that, about that, that civic pride that, that uh, our public safety professionals have. It, it's an honor, first off, to work with the men and women who serve uh, not only our city, but our county, our state, and, and our whole country. Um, I do see them day in and day out, they're human beings. They put their boots on, you know, one foot at a time each and every day. But they do it with a totally different passion than those who don't run to the, to the tragic events. A lot of us have, a, have it in us to run away from them, but these men and women truly put it out there. And a lot of times it's, it's, a, it's a forgotten uh, profession until you need them. Most people don't need law enforcement. Most people don't need uh, a firefighter or an EMT to come to them. But when they do, they expect that response to be there, and that response is always there. Again, these members are running to the tragic events, not away from them, and it's, it's an honor to do that. I think the most uh, brilliant thing I've ever heard said was by one of our BAT chiefs from Polk County Fire Rescue who said that when the residents of Polk County call 911, it's usually not to say, hey, how's your day going? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, anything I can do for you? It's usually at their, at their worst hour, their worst minute in their life. And, and, and our public safety professionals are, are the first on scene, the first to, uh, 
to arrive at this. Yeah, they are, and, and they don't know what they're coming into. Uh, the, the information that is being brought through the phone lines and, and through the dispatcher is very limited. And those, those law enforcement personnel and the, the firefighters, they, they have just a, a, a very small snippet of what the call is truly about. And once they get there, it could be totally different. It could be uh, a lot more calm, but it can also be a lot worse. And uh, they don't know, call to call, what they're truly going to. There is no such thing as a normal or typical call. And that, that means a lot for them to step out there, get in that vehicle, and go to the call, no matter what it is, no matter what they think the outcome is going to be, they go in order to serve the people, and that needs to be honored. Let's talk about the event. You said we've got seven years of it going on. Um, I've been privileged enough to cover it a, a, a few times, and one thing that, that I've seen it do is, is grow. Tell us a little bit about uh, what the folks attending can, can, can expect. Well, the, the event has grown over the years, and I think that's a, a, a pride in, in not only our, our, the people who serve, but the, the people of the county who want to give back and just show that little bit of appreciation. Uh, we, we start the, the event off with a Freedom Walk, and the Freedom Walk is a symbolic walk that, that each one of these first responders, whether military, law enforcement, firefighter, or EMTs, they put, the, put their boots on every day to, to serve us. And so we want to walk in honor of every step that they take. It's, it's not a very strenuous walk. It's a, about a four block area in downtown Winter Haven. Uh, it is led by Bagpipe and the uh, Army ROTC unit from the Winter Haven High School. Uh, they, they guide us. And once we do the walk, we come back into Central Park and we, we hear a little bit from the heart of each one of these groups, the military, the uh, law enforcement, the firefighter, and EMT. We hear from their heart what, what truly it means to serve. Not only to serve now, but some of these have served prior to 9-11. And so they, they contrast you know, what, what happened then and what ha has happened now. And we ultimately uh, end the service with the last call for each one of, of our first responders. Uh, That's a very moving time, and um, usually there's not a dry eye in the area. I thought the most impressive thing that I saw in, in shooting it was the riderless horse. That, that one was the one that got me. Yeah. Yes, we uh, do have the riderless horse. We, we have the three-shot volley, which is the 21-gun salute, as, as some call it. Um, again, we have the bag, bagpipes. And we end it with a final call, uh, the final radio call. And it's not just for law enforcement, but it's the final call for all first responders and personnel. Obviously, to put on an event like this, it, it takes cooperation and, and uh, from the city of Winter Haven, from the commission, and, and, and obviously from the, the Winter Haven PD. Talk to me about the, the efforts that go into putting something like this on. The city of Winter Haven has been behind this 100% each and every year. The city of Winter Haven is very proud of, of, number one, our facilities, but also of the men and women who serve not only in our community, but in the whole county. And they are, they are very honored to, to host this event every year that we go to them and request it's it's what what do you need what can we help you with uh, we have always had a, a wonderful wonderful relationship with the commission and the the city leaders in order to put this event on but more importantly it's also very uh, very humbling to get the cooperation from all of the agencies across the county not only the uh, the Veterans Council, but uh, the the Polk County Fire, the firefighter uh, organizations from each municipality, and the law enforcement agencies from each muni municipality, and each one of those show up with their agency flag in a multi-agency uh, flag display as the uh, beginning of the the ceremony each and every time, and it's 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 a beautiful sight to see. 
as with an event like this, are there sponsorship opportunities, volunteer opportunities? There are volunteer opportunities. There, we don't have sponsorships because this is not something to raise money. We're, mm -hmm. we're not out there to raise any kind of funds for anybody. Uh, this is not political, so we request that nobody uh, arrive trying to pass out political uh, paraphernalia because, frankly, this is nonpartisan. This is just a time for us to come together and focus on those first responders who have gone before for us and those who serve now and those who are who have retired but anyone who wants to volunteer we we welcome them to uh, to contact us and we can certainly put them to work and how do they go about contacting you they can contact me at the Winter Haven Police Department at 291-5858 or they can email me and that is jbrown at mywinterhaven.com now this year's event uh, slightly different uh, compared to years past number one it's going on a Sunday and with respect to those who go to church and uh, times are changed. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yes, traditionally we have held this in the evening time. Um, we could have moved this to uh, either Saturday or Monday, but we decided that we want to keep it the somber day the event on that day for 9-11 so we've moved it a little bit earlier in respect to those who go to church so we're going to have it at two o'clock and it should wrap up around four o'clock um, usually we've had a candlelight service directly following but this time we're going to release balloons for each one of the re first responders and the venue itself uh, Winter Haven has uh plenty of places that they could do this but uh, the downtown Central Park location let's talk a little bit about that and what the backdrop is the Central Park is beautiful the city of Winter Haven has done a fantastic job in in revitalizing the whole downtown area and with the the beautiful trees the the, the grassy area and the fountain it's it's no more of a perfect place to to have this and it's very picturesque it's very very quiet um, even even on the evenings that we've held this with with the the businesses in the area it just draws people and there's just a, a calming peace in that in that park and I couldn't choose a, a or I couldn't ask for a better place to have this well, we got just a little bit of time left anything else you want to cover anything else that that the folks should know in, inspire them to, to get off their couches and, and come out and and enjoy this uh, this event and, and think about the, the folks that uh, have served them in the military and of course their public servants. One of our, our deepest desires with this event is to make sure that our young children do not forget the sacrifices that have been made. Many of our elementary, middle school and high schoolers weren't around or they were very small when 9-11 occurred and we don't want to forget. We don't want to forget what happened that, that horrific day. We're not trying to relive it, we're trying to honor and, and ultimately give our, our young people the opportunity to see exactly what occurred on our soil and make them aware that there are men and women that are still walking here today that were either at the site or they chose to serve due to that event. We have a lot of Boy Scout and young church groups that, that attend the event, and it's, it's a way for us to give the families an opportunity to show our kids what happened, but why we need to make it important to honor all of the first responders in everything they do. And frankly, with, with everything that continues to happen day to day, even right now, it's, it's important for our young people to see that our first responders are there to help them. They're their friends, and they're there to be honored. Jamie, as usual, always a pleasure uh, having you in studio. And, and any time that we here at Pole Place can, can help you promote anything, you're always welcome in that chair. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I invite you to join the community for the seventh annual Honoring Our Heroes, Remembering the Day. The Polk County Veterans Council, along with Polk County Fire Rescue, law enforcement agencies are coordinating an event to mark the 15th anniversary of the September 11th tragedy that honors all Polk County first responders and pays tribute 
to those who lost their lives in that fateful day. Honoring our heroes, remembering the day, takes place Sunday, September 11th at Central Park in downtown Winter Haven. The event begins at 2 p.m. and features the Freedom Walk to honor all military, law enforcement, firefighters, and EMS heroes, which is followed by the service that will pay tribute to all heroes who call Polk County home. Now, for more information, you can email Jamie Brown at jbrown at mywinterhaven.com or check the event out on the web at www.winterhaven.com. PD.com.